Hey, we're here at the Dam Show. I'm at the Sure booth. Man, you guys have a lot of stuff here this year, but I'm with so Yuri. So much stuff. How you uh, doing? You're going to show us some things in Wireless Workbench, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So whatever you want to know, Wireless Workbench 7 is one of our new products that we're showing. Some of my audience may not even know exactly generally what Wireless Workbench does, so kind of give us a run through. Absolutely. And then we'll talk about some of the new features. Absolutely. So Wireless Workbench is our software that we use to coordinate frequencies for just about any wireless system. Obviously, it integrates directly with the Shure system. So if you have anything that's SLXD and up for our transmitters or our PSM 1000 system for in-ear monitors, you can directly network into a switch and have Wireless Workbench control your devices, which is just awesome. So you can look here, nice and simple. So this is our inventory window. Keeps track of your entire wireless ecosystem. You can see the green stuff is the stuff over here that's actually connected. And then we have the gray stuff over here is stuff that is either not connected or stuff that can't connect because it doesn't have an Ethernet port, right? Okay. So you keep track of every single thing. And the reason we do that is because the magic happens in the frequency coordination window. This is an entire scan of the entire frequency spectrum that, uh, that is happening here in real time. And how did you acquire that scan? So you can use any of the network devices. So this one, I don't Oh, they use an 8600. So this is even better. We're getting real fancy over here. This is going to be <laughs> nice. unbelievable fancy. So this guy right here wow, look is at a frequency thing. manager. You can see the same scan. It's constantly scanning right here. So probably out of the price range of most people that are uh, yeah. watching your program, but it's really, really, really cool. We use it at like the Super Bowl and stuff. Um, so this has uh, got antennas hooked into it, and it's doing a real-time scan. And then we just took one of those scans and put it into Wireless Workbench. Cool. So that's actually going to run a sweep, basically, yep. of all of the RF radio frequency stuff that's going on in this Correct. exact place. Correct. Right? Yep. And it's going to show us basically where there's already antennas broadcasting and maybe where there's some space for us to use. Yes. Yeah, every time you see a little thick slice like this, this is a TV channel. And anytime you see a big, giant spike, that's going to be a transmitter that's probably either somewhere in the room or nearby. Awesome. So you keep track of the entire wireless environment by doing this. And you can actually do continuous scanning. Right now it's set to one sweep, so this is a frozen in time. But you can have wireless workbench, regardless of what device you use, do a continuous scan so you're constantly updating what the information is. So we're looking at this scan here, and the reason we have it is we can import all of the stuff that we had in our inventory down here. And I'm not going to do this now because we've uh, done calculations already before, but if I hit the calculate button, Wireless Workbench is going to find clean frequencies for every single device that I have here and tell me exactly what they are. And if they're networked, I can deploy them automatically and just let it go. And if they're not networked, it'll still find the frequencies for them. So it could be like a competitor device or it could yeah. just be one of our devices that doesn't have a network port. It'll find a frequency. You just go to the device and you set the frequency and you're good to go. Wow. Cool. Yeah. And then make sure that you're not going to, I mean, you're going to have smooth sailing, basically. That's you're the idea. You're not going to have yep. anybody else transmitting on your same frequency band. Of course. And so it'll just, you know, no dropouts or anything like that, yeah. right? And we have some systems, of course, if somebody turns on a transmitter after you do the scan and after you coordinate, which does happen. Uh, we do have some systems that will react to that. It'll give you a, let me show you this, this interference button. It'll give you a warning, interference warning, and you can actually see what's happening in real time and make adjustments. Cool. Yep. And then there's that final tab, the monitor, yeah, the monitor tab, window. Right? Let's see if there's anything in there. Yeah, oh, window. there we go. Yeah. So you can, you can view any of the stuff that you have that's uh, networked. Again, you can't monitor competitors' devices, obviously. You can't, and you can't monitor things that aren't networked, but any of the stuff that's connected to the network switch and it's on. Basically what you're seeing in the monitor window is exactly what you're going to see on the front screen of the, on the front panel of your device. Cool. So depending on the device, it'll show you some information, might show you some more information. Uh, and then you can also look at a timeline in real time. Oh wow. So you can actually keep track of what the RF strength is, you can keep track of the audio levels, pretty much any of this stuff that you see on the, on the screen over a timeline. So you know, if something bad happens yeah. at a show, and you have no idea what happened, you can always go back and you can take a look and diagnose the problems. Right, you're sitting side stage, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the, the talent has their belt packs, you can monitor the battery, yep. you can monitor the, you know, the reception, and like you said, it shows that time lapse so that if something Correct. happens, at least you know why it happened. Correct. Cool. cool. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is once, once you go up to our Axion system, we actually have a system called Showlink, which is this guy right here. And this is, the, this is magic. This is the coolest thing that you'll ever, ever use. If you have Showlink enabled devices, which is our ADX devices, like this ADX2 right here, this is the coolest thing. You ready for this? If I have some kind of dropout and I have the ADX and I have the this 8600, what's going to happen is I have a dropout, 
the AD600 was going to find a new frequency automatically for me. It's going to send that information to whatever networked receiver I have. So the receiver will change it to the new frequency. And then Showlink, this little guy right here, is going to send that information to the transmitter. And the transmitter will change frequencies as well. Wow. So as far as your audience is concerned, they're never going to be able to tell the difference. There will be no audio dropout, and the system will just automatically change yeah, the frequency. It happens so quickly that no one will even notice. Exactly. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's some real, real space age stuff. It's only in our Axion system, but without that system, Wireless Workbench will still let you see the problems, and you can go and fix them however you need to. Nice. The only new thing that you're going to yeah. see here, for those of you that are Wireless Workbench users now, if you use version 6 or below, it's now dark. Uh, this is one of the biggest requests that we got true. from our users, is that you turn on Wireless Workbench, you got, oh, he's using seven, he was using six yep. before. It's just a big bright screen in the middle of a theater or in the middle of a yep. live venue or some sort. Pretty bad news. So now it's only dark. So what do we have over here? So I love this little guy right here. So this is also new in Wireless Workbench 7. So this is our scan library, blown up <laughs> like to huge proportions. But this is new. Anybody that has uh, a username with sure, can upload scans and you can download scans. So this is a really, really useful device that if you have a system that you can't network for some reason or you're just not able to do a scan for whatever reason yep. or maybe you just don't have time or you don't have time to set it up but you want to know what the RF environment looks like in whatever venue you're at or whatever space you're at. You can now find this in the scan library and download the information and import it directly into Wireless Workbench. So for example, we go to the United States here uh, so here's Chicago, where sure is headquarters, where I am at. You can see one of my scans. I'm in the north suburbs over here. So that's me right there. Hello. So this is my scan. This is not my house. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that dumb. I didn't put my <laughs> house's address on there. Um, but this is where I live. And you can go in and you can actually, let's see, there it is. Oh, come on, there it is. And in a moment, it'll show you a preview of the actual scan. So this is the scan. Uh, and I did it a few weeks ago. The good news is, TV channels don't change very often. So if you're planning a tour or you're trying to figure out what the RF environment is in whatever city you're going to, you can find these scans and you can see exactly where the TV channels are and how you can work around it. If you're thinking of purchasing or renting equipment that works around this kind of stuff, you can. Buffalo Grove, not too busy of an environment, but if I go back, maybe, let's see what we have here. Whoop. Let's go to Texas. Dallas is usually a pretty busy RF environment. American Airlines Center, let's take a look at this. So we had one of our folks, look at that. It scanned from 470 to about 1,000, almost uh, 1G. So a pretty advanced system, AXT600, there you go. That AD600 thing, the really, really fancy frequency manager, yep. the AXT600 is a precursor to that, the analog version of it. So uh, as much as you travel and as yes. many scans as you're going to make around the country, we don't have to rely on you alone to make these scans. No. How are you going to gather these scans? So right now, time? this is still in beta. So all of the scans that you're seeing now, are going to be by uh, our representatives that are locally all over the place. People that we know and we trust to do good scans with uh, really, really good equipment. Uh, eventually, this is going to be open to everybody. So anybody can upload a scan. You, you sign up with Sure. People can upvote and downvote it. You know, we have some guidelines that we try to set. We want you to use one of our Axiom devices to do a scan because that's the broadest frequency range. Generally, you want to have transmitters off because you don't want the presence of other people's transmitters to be part of your scan information for somebody else to use because those are going to go on and off. Yep. People come in and out. The exception of that, of course, is it, it's an installation at a college and they haven't, re they haven't changed their transmitters for a long time. Maybe it's important information for you to know where are their transmitters set on a regular basis. Yeah, so, awesome. Yeah. Really exciting, man. Yeah, this is going to hey, be awesome. Thanks for your time. It's going to be so I much fun. It. Absolutely. Yeah, good stuff.